There's this bookstore not far from my apartment that I walk into from time to time just to look at the photo books. The last time I was there, I came across this book by Fred Herzog, and I flipped through it, and I was instantly captivated. Fred Herzog was a German-born Canadian photographer who was known for his color street photography, particularly capturing life in Vancouver in the 1950s and 1960s. He was an early adopter of color photography when black and white was the norm for quote-unquote serious photographers. His work focused on the ordinary, everyday scenes of urban life. He captured moments in time that may seem mundane, but collectively they provide a rich tapestry of the social and cultural context of Vancouver in the mid-20th century. So for these reasons and more, let's shine our spotlight onto Fred Herzog. Fred Herzog was born Ulrich Herzog in 1930 in southern Germany. His early exposure to a photograph of Vancouver's industrial harbor in a school textbook planted the seeds of a connection that would define much of his life's work. Tragedy struck Herzog early on when he lost his mother in 1941. After his father's death upon returning from the war, Herzog found himself working in a hardware store and nurturing a burgeoning interest in photography. In 1952, Herzog left Germany taking a ship to Montreal and then a train to Toronto. There he had various jobs. He continued to take pictures, even setting up a darkroom with a friend who taught him some of the specialized techniques of medical photography. In May 1953, he was in Vancouver and soon found employment on a cargo ship. Herzog's encounters with fellow shipmates and the diverse experiences of post-war upheavals shaped his worldview. It was here that his colleagues donned the nickname Fritz upon him, which soon became Fred. It was also during this time that he befriended Gerard Blum, a fellow German who brought in Herzog's intellectual horizons, exposing him to literature, philosophy, politics, economics, religion, and science. Herzog's entry into the world of photography was not instantaneous. He held various jobs, including a stint as a medical photographer. In 1957, he secured a position at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, which tethered him to the city. Finding Vancouver to be engagingly seedy and colorful, he now began to photograph it with his new Leica M2 and M4 35mm cameras. His early works, focusing on secondhand stores and bookshops, marked the initial steps toward the distinctive approach that would characterize his extensive city portrait. Herzog's spare time found him navigating the streets of downtown Vancouver, Chinatown, and the downtown east side, his chosen domains for exploration. Unlike the preferred positive view of civic officials, Herzog felt that the new, clean, safe, and honest neighborhoods do not give rise to interesting pictures. The thing that street photographers hope to discover has to do with the disorderly vitality of the street. The street people on the corners and plazas, in billiard parlors, pubs, and stores, where shoppers, voyeurs, and loiterers feel at home. Notably, Herzog's choice of color photography in an era dominated by black and white marked a departure from convention. This is something covered in my video about William Eggleston, which is someone who Fred Herzog is often compared to. As Herzog himself later mocked, just as we know that liberty and fresh-caught salmon are good, we knew then that color was to be used only for pretty sights, landscapes, swans, flowers, sunsets, gnarled trees, and burning candles were okay. Everything else raised eyebrows. Herzog defied the norm, using Kodachrome to capture the subtleties of urban life, post-war consumables, and the atmospheric variations of Vancouver's coastal climate. Herzog's commitment to his craft was remarkable. He averaged two rolls of film a week, resulting in well over 100,000 exposures over 29 years. Balancing his photographic pursuits with a full-time job at the University of British Columbia, where he headed the Photocine Division of the Department of Biomedical Communications, Herzog demonstrated a profound dedication to his chosen path. His photographic technique was straightforward, however, what set Herzog apart was his keen observational skills and a pictorial sensibility that transformed ordinary subjects into meaningful images. Herzog had many ways of achieving this. For example, in Howe and Nelson from 1960, we see a new skyscraper rising from the horizon line of older low-rise homes and shops, portraying a poignant documentation of a changing landscape. 
Man with Bandage from 1968 is as comically profound and eye-capturing as any in the history of street photography. Old Man Main Street from 1959 juxtaposes the person walking into the frame against a geometric multi-hued background of storefronts. The barbershop drama in his photo You Are Next from 1959 is understated and yet intrigues us into reading the expressions of the two men in the frame within the frame. Later on in life, one of his photos was honored by becoming a stamp. The stamp was created from one of his photographs, Bogner's Grocery, depicting a group of children playing out front of an old grocery store in 1960. According to one website, the location where the photo was taken, at West 5th Avenue in Vancouver, is just an empty warehouse. But in 1960, as we can see in the photograph, Bogner's Grocery was part of a far more vibrant community. Whether capturing a new skyscraper rising through the horizon line, or the quiet moments in the nightlife of Granville Street, Herzog's work exuded humility, order, and clarity of purpose. In 1959, Herzog encountered Robert Frank's The Americans, which left a lasting impression on him. The seamless integration of daily experience and picture making resonated with Herzog's own approach. Subsequently, in 1962, he discovered the work of Walker Evans, recognizing a kindred disposition in his documentary style or lyric documentary. Herzog later wrote, The breadth of Evans's vision is only rivaled by the precision with which he nails content and deep meaning. Despite his influential role, Fred Herzog very seldom showed his work to his students at the University of British Columbia, maintaining this humble demeanor. However, his work found its way onto the cover of Arts Canada magazine in 1968, and by 1970, he sold his first print. Herzog's work, while appreciated by a small following, remained somewhat below the radar during the 1970s and early 1980s, as Vancouver's photography scene shifted toward more conceptual and allegorical practices. However, in 1986, Presentation House Gallery showcased Herzog's work in a group show called In Transition Post-War Photography in Vancouver, providing a platform for wider recognition. By the time of his retirement, Herzog faced the challenge of presenting his extensive archive to the world. He struggled with accurately reproducing the nuanced details of his slides. Despite the exceptional richness captured by his transparencies, existing printing methods fell short in conveying the full depth of the information. The conventional approach involved creating sebachrome prints in the darkroom, a process plagued by issues such as high contrast, oversaturation, and limited control over the final result. Herzog, staying updated on technological advancements, foresaw a solution emerging in the digital realm around 2001. The breakthrough lay in digitizing the transparencies, enabling correction of slight fading, elimination of colored casts, and removal of any scratches. Utilizing these digital files, inkjet prints with remarkable tonal range and sensitivity could finally showcase the true beauty of Fred Herzog's artistic work. In 2007, a major retrospective at the Vancouver Art Gallery revealed the depth and breadth of Herzog's work leading to exhibitions across Canada and overseas. Critics and commentators began drawing comparisons between Herzog's images and the works of renowned photographers such as Walker Evans, Helen Levitt, Robert Frank, Saul Leiter, Harry Callahan, Ernst Haas, Gary Winogrand, Lee Friedlander, William Eggleston, and Stephen Shore. Herzog's photographs not only served as a visual history of Vancouver, but also raised questions about the transformations that cities undergo. Photographer Jeff Wall wrote in his essay, Vancouver Appearing and Not Appearing in Fred Herzog's Photographs, Herzog captured with gentle affection those streets, doorways, backyards, and shop windows. The only problem is that those objects of his affection no longer exist. They are just vestiges of what they were in 1957 or 1961, when he captured them perfectly. Fred Herzog's work, often described as a great gift, stands as a testament to his dedicated and thoughtful observation of his adopted city. The images, while documenting a specific moment in Vancouver's history, 
also transcend the temporal and geographical boundaries, inviting viewers to reflect on the universal themes of urban life, of societal change, and of the passage of time. As the world continues to grapple with the impact of progress, Fred Herzog's photographs serve as a reminder of the value of observing, understanding, and preserving the everyday moments that define our cities and define our societies. Thank you all so much for watching this video on the wonderful work of Fred Herzog. Let me know what you think of his work down in the comments. And while you're there, let me know who you think I should cover next in my Artist Spotlight series. And then while you're at it, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released on my channel. You could also find that join button, and for a couple bucks a month, you could become a member, and you can help this channel grow and thrive into the future. And with that, I will leave you off with some more photos by the great Fred Herzog, and I'll see you all next time.